because I'd been through the Pentagon. Right after 9-11, about 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and, and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the joint staff who had used, used to work for me. And one of the generals called me and he said, sir, you got to come in. You got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to Al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. Here we could see Babylon is described as the hammer of the whole earth. So I came back to see him a few weeks later. And by that time, we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, and he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense's office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. So go through the countries again? Well, starting with Iraq, then Syria and Lebanon, then Libya, then Somalia and Sudan, and then back to Iran. Clearly, we can see that the United States wars in the Middle East are planned. What you're looking at is the Medo Persian Empire, described in Daniel chapter 8. In the area and region of 5, there in the bottom left corner, we have Libya. And there is Egypt, and below that is Kush. And that's where the region of Somalia and Sudan. You see Sudan below Egypt, and then the blue there is Somalia. Here are the flags of that area. And again, these are predetermined wars. In addition to that, we also have Iraq and Syria. Iran is there to the far right. Next to that is Iraq, and to the left of that is Syria. Here we are in Daniel chapter 8, and we can see in it a ram and a he-goat. And we can see that the ram is described as the Medo persian Empire. That was the region we showed you on the map. And the rough, the satire, the demon, goat, is the king of Greece. And we're showing you that America is this he-goat when they uh, announced the Baphomet statue in, De in Detroit. And not only that, you can see it's the king of Greece. In the Greek, this is uh, Yevam, and it is that general area of Greece and Rome. And this is the influence of America, where we get the uh, form of government and Senate, and, and even in the education system, you have the Greek gods being educated to the children. So the... Um, the rough goat is America, the king of Yavan. Also, in Daniel chapter 11, we can see some of the nations that they were describing in, in the war. Um, in fact, Egypt had the Muslim Brotherhood, which was so supported by the Obama administration. But here you have the Libyans and the Ethiopians. The Ethiopia there in the Hebrew is Cushy. And this is the area of Sudan, Somalia, Ethiopia, and Eritrea. In order to understand what's going on in Daniel chapter 8, we must go to Revelation chapter 13. Here we are, and you can see this is a parallel bow. You have Kim James here and living here. But in verse 2, the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. His feet were as the feet of a bear. His mouth was a mouth of a lion, and a dragon gave him his power. We see the beast as well in Hosea chapter 13, 
where we have the lion, the leopard, the bear, and the wild beast. Then, of course, in Daniel chapter 7, we also have the lion, the bear, the leopard, and the fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, strong exceedingly. This is like the terrible beast, okay? So the first beast was like a lion with eagle's wings. I beheld the wings were plucked, and the plucked, um, and they were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on his feet like a man. This is like Nebuchadnezzar, and a man's heart was given to it. Nebuchadnezzar was, um, he ate ox, like a, he ate grass like an ox. But it's really number, um, and then we have, behold, the second, the, another beast, a second, like unto the bear, raised itself on its side and it had ribs in its mouth and between its teeth of it, it, it said, arise, devour much flesh. Now, this is the one we want to talk about is the leopard. After this, I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings. Okay, remember those four. Four wings of a bird. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. So, this leopard is connected to the he-goat. We see the beast as well in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 6. It says, the leopard shall lay down with the kid. That's the connection between the leopard and the he-goat. Okay? And also you'll see the young lion, the bear, and the young lion. And then it also says the asp or the, um, the viper. So this is also the animals that are part of the beast. But the lion shall eat straw like an ox. So, of course, that is like what we saw with Nebuchadnezzar. But our connection here is the leopard shall lay down with the kid, the goat, the he-goat. And here's the he-goat, the rough goat, the he-goat of Greece, again, here in Daniel chapter 8. But let's remember that the leopard had four heads. And the four heads we can find in Daniel 8, verse 8, therefore the he-goat grew great and was strong, and a great horn was broken, and it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. So these four notable ones are the four heads of the leopard. Remember, we saw the leopard had four heads and had four wings. Well, this is the connection, like we saw, of the leopard laying down with the kid. So that is the um, connection of the leopard in Daniel chapter 8. Now, Daniel chapter 8 is certainly an end times um, chapter. We can see here there were two saints speaking to one another, and they asked, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the abomination of desolation? Okay, so the abomination of desolation is also seen here in Daniel 11, and it's uh, they shall pollute the sanctuary fortress. Um, this is really fortress in the Hebrew, and they shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that makes desolate. This, of course, is what the Lord Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 15, when therefore he shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, seen in the holy place, whosoever reads, let him understand. So this, of course, is a future prophecy. Now, the four notable ones in Daniel chapter 8 come from the great king. And we know that to be Ronald Reagan. And then we have a succession of U.S. presidents, which are the four notable ones. From out of that horn comes four notable ones. We have George Washington Bush, Clinton, um, H.W., and then Obama, which becomes the little horn. Okay, and he's the sixth in Revelation. So in Revelation... Chapter 17, verse 10, there are seven kings. Five are fallen, one is. That's the sixth little horn. So the five are these four, president, these four presidents here, including Reagan. And the seventh must continue a short space. And the beast is the eighth. So the seventh is Trump, who is the lion with eagle's wings. Okay, so remember we saw the lion. So this is the four notable ones. Now, let's continue and listen to General Wes Clark talk more about the wars and the reason for the wars. I got called in by 
an officer on the Joint Staff who told me that he said, you know, we're going to invade Iraq. I said, but why? And he said, I don't know. He said, I guess because we don't know what else to do. But in fact, the why of it went back a decade to the spring of 1991. It went back to the argument inside the Republican Party about whether or not the Gulf War should have ended with the capture of Baghdad and the overthrow of Saddam Hussein. And in 1991, when I talked to Secretary Wolfowitz, you know, he said, we didn't get rid of Saddam Hussein, and, uh, and we should have. He said, we only got five or 10 years to clean up the, the Middle East. These old Soviet surrogate regimes like Syria and Iraq, get rid of them before the next superpower comes along to challenge us. We didn't foresee that we'd actually be using force aggressively to change regimes. And it appeared full-blown after 9-11. And somehow, in the minds of the American people, the attack run by Osama bin Laden, based out of Afghanistan, became part of Saddam Hussein. And to retaliate and make sure that, and it was phrased in many different ways, there was effort in the intelligence community to prove that Saddam Hussein had somehow been connected to the strikes in New York and against the Pentagon. And then there was the idea that, well, but he might have some weapons of mass destruction, biological, chemical, nuclear weapons that he could give to terrorists, despite the fact that Saddam Hussein and Al-Qaeda couldn't have been further apart in terms of working together as allies. Now, if you put them under enough pressure, maybe, you know, they would team up against the United States, but we created that pressure against Saddam Hussein for our own reasons. And what were those reasons? We've never really heard. And so, and I'd been reading all the intelligence until I retired. So I began to see that, and I thought back to the conversation with Wolfowitz, and I thought what I'd been told inside the Pentagon, and I began to smell something that didn't smell right. Now here is the he goat that we saw described as that satire, that shaggy goat. It's a Baphomet statue, which you can see here, um, that was commissioned by the Satanic Temple. And when this thing, this statue of Baphomet, um, was unveiled, you can see the public unveiling July 25th, 2015. This kicked off Daniel's timeline. We have other videos on that, but for time's sake, we want to explain that this is, in fact, the, the he-goat. You can see there is a center kind of horn thing on its head. Of course, all kinds of satanic things going on here. But this is also the leader of the locust army. Here in Revelation chapter 9, we do find this locust army, and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and it was given them power as a scorpion. And we can see these characteristics here. For time's sake, we won't read all of it. But up here, uh, hopefully it's clear on the screen. Let's get it clear. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. So we can see the locust came out of the bottomless pit. But here they have a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue, he has his name Apollyon. Or these words are destroyer. Now our connection to the locust army in this king is found in Proverbs chapter 30. And, they had, and the locusts have no king. They go forth through a all of them by bands. And then it says in verse 30, the lion, which is the strongest among the beasts, turns not away for any. And the loins, it's not really greyhound there, but it's the he goat and a king against whom there is no rising. So here we see this he goat, and we showed you that Baphomet and a king. And again, that's the he goat we saw in Daniel. 831, the rough goat. But here we have our connection to the locust, the lion, and the he goat. These are, these are 
the king that is over them is that destroyer. Okay. Now the lion is also brings us back to, um, let's go back to Revelation 9. And the teeth of the locust army, their teeth were as the teeth of lions or the mouth of a lion. Now this, again, this brings us back to Revelation chapter 13. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and the feet like a bear and its mouth, a mouth of a lion. Okay, so the locust army also has teeth like a lion. Okay, so this is a person. Okay, the, the, this aspect of the locust is a person. It's that lion. So we saw that lion in Proverbs 30. And then we can also see the teeth in the mouth of a lion. Now in Joel 2, we have more information on the locust army. Joel, uh, excuse me, Joel chapter 1, verse 4. And what the, the palmer worm has left, the locust has eaten. And that which the locust has eaten, the canker worm has eaten. Which the canker worm has eaten, the caterpillar has eaten. Awake, you drumper, drunkards, and weep, and howl, all you drinkers of wine. So these are the drunk nations in Revelation. For a nation, now this is important, get this. For a nation is come upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion. And he has a cheek, teeth of a great lion. So this is clearly the locust army, okay, is a nation. This is United States, a nation. Okay, has the teeth of a lion and the teeth of a great lion. So the great lion is Donald Trump. So those of you that support Donald Trump, I hopefully through the sequence of videos that we've been sharing with you, he is being influenced by the bottomless pit. He's being influenced by the Baphomet, the he goat. Um, it doesn't matter what if you're Democrat, Republican, none of the matters. The beast doesn't care. Okay. The beast has the, the, the heads of a leopard. Those heads of a leopard are both Democrat and Republican. The beast doesn't care how you vote. It's going to, it's going to, you know, be the beast. So the locust army, okay, is connected to the lion. And the lion is also connected to the he goat and the king, Apollyon. The beast is over them. These are the ones leading the war of Daniel chapter 8. If this information is new, please watch some of the other videos. A lot of this is refresher. Trump is the seventh. He's the lion with two wings of an eagle. This is a playlist. Is Trump the Antichrist? We're not saying he is. We're saying he is the seventh. Okay. So we've covered many of the things that he's fulfilling, like Haman, the temple coin, the mystery of the beast, of other things we talked about here, Trump's uh, blasphemous statement, the beast beginning his power 42 months, and the line, Trump the lion with eagle's wings. These are all messages, guys, that um, we've already discussed some of these things. And don't think this is anti-Republican because we've done the same thing with Obama. And here is our playlist on Obama, and you can see our first video, Watch for a Trigger Event the 9th of Av or July 25th, 2015. So we announced ahead of time to watch for something to happen and it was the Baphomet statue. As you can see here, the Baphomet statue thus fulfilled uh, the trigger event for Daniel's timeline. Now many of the things that we are sharing with you on Daniel chapter eight, many of them are here in this playlist, okay? The Baphomet statue fulfills Daniel chapter eight. Obama, the little horn, the Assyrian, the seven kings, seven shepherds, Obama, the leopard goat. Okay, so many of these things we, um, we, we've talked about on Obama. We've talked about um, Trump and the locust army. And in this playlist on Mystery Babylon, we show clearly that Mystery Babylon is the locust army. Here you see right here, the locust, the fifth trumpet is the harlot's army. I strongly encourage you to watch that. We have much more detail to uh, f clearly prove that the locust army is the harlot's army. And in this one, we're proving that Donald Trump's actions in the support of the United States bringing wars and destruction in the Middle East 
is in fact the fulfillment of Daniel chapter 8. Now we certainly don't support war or any of this. Um, these are horrible things. We, we certainly wish none of this would have to happen. But guys, we're just showing you the truth and we're, and we're showing you all of this for this reason. You see the first video here, come out of her, my people, come out of mystery Babylon that you receive not of her plagues. So guys, thanks for watching and watch and pray that you be counter worthy, escape all these things. In E.E.A. Sus Christos name, amen.